A few videos from now, we've seen how to create a grid-based game, at least get the movement right and have some grid to manage everything that's happening and handle collisions. Here's an example for you, a simple project based on that to see how to create an isometric grid-based movement. It uses almost the same code as the grid example. That's thanks to the separation of concerns where we have our code handling the grid, the exact same thing. The only difference is how we move the player on screen, how we display the object. We use the conversion from the Cartesian space to the isometric space seen in yesterday's video. The source code is available on GitHub. It's commented or at least the changes from the grid example are. As far as the grid is concerned, there's one little difference with this sorter object. Because we're working in an isometric world, now the characters can overlap on screen. So the objects, the player and the obstacles are not added directly to the grid as children, but they are added to the white sort node, which is a child of the grid. So we had to get that node to place the characters and obstacles inside of it. The other difference is that when you set the tile map to use the isometric mode, it then takes into account the tile origin when using the world to map and map to world functions. So I've removed the half tile size. Now we only need the actual tile size. And I've removed it from the calculations as well. When we set the position, we don't have to add half the tile size to get the center. Godot makes the calculation for us. As far as the update child position is concerned, there's nothing new. It works exactly the same. So the base functionality of managing the grid doesn't change at all. I've added a few print statements if you want to get some debug information with string interpolations. It's a good occasion to see those operators. When you use the modular operator followed by S, you will convert whatever variable you interpolate to a string. This is a lot easier than using the string function for every variable you want to print. When you press the P key, you will print debug information to the screen and you will see how the target position of the character evolves. If you're colliding with something, it will turn red. Onto the player script now, there are, again, very few differences. One is that to get the grid, we have to get the player's parent twice because his direct parent is now the Y sort node. Then we do have to convert the player's motion from the Cartesian to the isometric system. That's why I've added the function from the last video around the top of the script. Last but not least, there's a simple fix from the previous example where because of the floating point errors, the character would sometimes stop on a floating position instead of the exact integer components of the target position. So now we are setting it exactly. We don't need the move function necessarily for our player to work because the grid is handling the collisions for us. The move function is useful when you are colliding with the world with a kinematic body, but otherwise setting the position to the current position plus the motion will do the exact same thing. That said, I invite you to get the sources, try out the game for yourself, and this gives you a boilerplate to extend for your next isometric game project. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.